review code provided by PlayStation. Before I start my review on The Last of Us Part 1, I want to make one thing clear. As a fan of the franchise and especially a fan of The Last of Us Part 1, which is my favorite video game of all time, I feel like it's my duty to give out an honest review on a game that is so beloved like Part 1 by tackling the positives and the negatives that this remake has. A fair critique of a game really does help developers to see in what areas they can improve on and also in what areas they should keep doing to provide the community with the best product possible. If you came into this video expecting me to completely bash The Last of Us Part 1 and give it a 0 out of 10 just because of the price tag and the controversy surrounding the existence of the remake, or if you came into this video expecting me not to talk about some of the issues that I may have with the game and act like there's absolutely nothing wrong, then this is not the video for you. I have always been honest in every single video that I produce for my channel, and that won't change today. So. What did I think about The Last of Us Part 1? Did Naughty Dog and PlayStation do justice to what is possibly one of, if not the best story-based game of all time, to the game that honestly changed my life forever? The short answer to these questions is that they nailed it for the most part. Although I may have some issues with some of the stuff that I will discuss in this video, I believe that this truly is the best way to play this absolute masterpiece. And if this game looks and feels this good on PlayStation 5, imagine when the PC port comes out for this game very soon. Before we get started, make sure to like the video as it helps this video to get to the eyes of more people and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So now with that out of the way, let's get started with what I honestly think about the remake of the game that I love the most, The Last of Us Part 1. After I finished playing The Last of Us Part 1 Remake, the first thing that came up to my mind was, wow, what an experience. Even though I have played this masterpiece of a game probably over 20 times in my lifetime on the PlayStation 3 with the original version and on the PlayStation 4 with the remastered version, even though I know beat by beat, scene by scene, every dialogue, every encounter, every single detail of this game because of how much this game means to me, Naughty Dog still managed to make a game that feels more intense, even more dramatic, and even more impactful compared to the remastered version, which without a doubt solidifies this game as probably one of the best story-based games Naughty Dog has ever made, at least in my opinion. And yes, even though this is not a new game, the improvements made by Naughty Dog surely do make a difference and there's no way in hell I'm heading back to the remastered version after playing the remake. The fact that there's people online really trying to make the argument that there's absolutely no difference between the remastered version and the remake version is probably one of the most laughable claims I have ever seen in the gaming community. I say this because the moment you pick up the controller and try The Last of Us Part 1 and then try the remastered version right after that, you will see and experience a major difference in quality in almost every single department. Picking up the controller and playing this game, the remake, in HDR and performance mode with dynamic 4K resolution targeting 60 frames per second on an OLED LG C1 was honestly one of the greatest experiences I have had in a very long time. Experiencing the improvements to the visuals that look probably even better than The Last of Us Part 2 was a joy to experience. Every scene in every environment was absolutely breathtaking. Hearing the improved audio design in how the guns sound when you shoot, making it as satisfying as part two. And when it comes to the overall gameplay, which was the biggest concern of everyone in the community, myself included, I guess it's safe to say that the gameplay truly is better than the remastered version for sure. Because of the improved shooting, the improved enemy and buddy AI, the improved animations and movements of Joel and Ellie when you play as them, almost completely eliminated that clunky, unresponsive 
immersive feeling when you get when you play as Joel in the PS3 and PS4 versions of The Last of Us. The experience is far better than I really expected. Now, because I wanted to have the best experience possible, I chose to play the game in my first playthrough on the Survivor difficulty to test the improvements to the gameplay sequences as I believe that you get to see the best of these games when you play in the harder difficulties and for the most part, it was very fun. Having enemies behave exactly like in The Last of Us Part 2, especially on the harder difficulties, was fantastic. To see some of the old tricks that I learned from the likes of the king of The Last of Us speedruns, Anthony Caliber, and other people online that basically show how to easily, you know, get out of certain sections without wasting too much ammo and stuff or too much time, just to see all those old tricks just not work in the remake is honestly a big testament to how the enemies react in this game and it shows how smart they are with their improved AI. The only time I was kind of successful in pulling it off with one of my old tricks was when I first got my rifle and tried to get past the federal soldiers in the capitol building to try to get to the subway section. Apart from that, every encounter feels and is different, especially on Survivor and Grounded, and enemies just don't give you enough time at all and I think that is probably one of the most challenging things about this game as the level designs aren't as expansive as part 2 so at times you have this claustrophobic feeling which I actually enjoy at times although it could be a little bit stressful. Runners and people with melee weapons and handgun weapons are probably the easiest enemies to fight in the game but the moment you encounter people with rifles or shotguns, stalkers, clickers and especially bloaters in the higher difficulties are a nice challenge. Let's take for example the bloater boss fight in the high school. In the remastered version, I found a way to kill the bloater without wasting too much resources in Survivor or Grounded. And what I would do is I would throw a Molotov to the bloater and then get close to the fire and the bloater so the bloater would once again come to me and then he would catch on fire for a second time on the same Molotov and then die. And if that didn't work, a Molotov and a nail bomb would do the trick. But in the remake, I threw a bloater, a molotov, a nail bomb, and almost everything I got in my arsenal and somehow I beat him at the end after dying so many times. This bloater in this game is as hard as the bloater in part 2 and is a great example of the good changes Naughty Dog has done in the gameplay sequences. Another good thing, like I said before, is the buddy AI has dramatically improved in the remake. Certain sections of the game feel better to play as you finally have proper help at times from the likes of Bill and Ellie for example, something that was just completely absent in the remake version. Like just take a look at this clip from Anthony Caliber on how horrible the AI for Bill was in the remastered version and just thank the gods of gaming that you don't have to deal with that BS anymore on the remake and finally have competent and proper support at times. Even though the improvements in the gameplay sequences are great, controlling Joel feels way more fluid and responsive, that the shooting and the AI is part 2 levels of awesome, there are a few things about the gameplay that are just a little bit disappointing but not deal breakers. Some of the melee animations Joel performs looks and feels janky at times during gameplay. Now that doesn't mean that it happens all the time when he's doing finishing animations because when he does it most of the time it looks good and it feels good and it's way better than the remastered version, but some animations look a little bit unpleasant polished and a little bit unrealistic and it can take you out of the experience sometimes. There are moments where it reminds me a little bit of the remastered version and if these things can be improved via a patch, it would honestly make the experience even better. I have also encountered minor bugs at times during gameplay sequences like this chair acting up for no reason for example or if you're engaging the hunters at night with Henry and Sam, if you look to the walls where there is no light, there's this weird black artifacting going on that I noticed but only saw it actually 
happening in that section. Again, these things could possibly be patched either with a day one patch or a future patch after launch, so hopefully those things can be fixed for a better experience. But my biggest disappointment actually with the gameplay of The Last of Us Remake, which probably is unpatchable at this point, is the lack of the beloved dodge and prone mechanics found in The Last of Us Part 2. Now, I understand that the prone mechanic would not make sense to implement in the game as the levels in this remake were not expanded like in Part 2 and remained the same, which is a shame because it would have been awesome to have expanded levels like Part 2, which for sure would make this game feel entirely different, which could have been absolutely awesome to experience. But what I don't really understand is why the dodge mechanic was not implemented in this remake. Having access to that L1 button to dodge in The Last of Us Part 2 was such a simple mechanic but changed the experience when you compare it to the original The Last of Us. It is so satisfying to dodge in The Last of Us Part 2 that it's easily one of my favorite things to do when I play The Last of Us Part 2 and it's what makes the gameplay so immersive and fun. Even people who hate The Last of Us Part 2 admit that the gameplay is absolutely absolutely fantastic. The amount of times that I would actually go and get cornered in the remake and wished the dodge mechanic was actually in the remake happened so many times and when you get the opportunity to counter in the remake by pressing triangle it just does not feel the same. It does not feel as rewarding or as silky like in The Last of Us Part 2. I guess it's safe to say that one of the biggest complaints gamers had for this remake apart from the $70 price tag was because of the lack of dodge in this remake when some of the info was leaked a few weeks ago and I can truly understand that frustration. It's honestly something you'll have to live with if you're planning on playing The Last of Us Remake if dodge was something that you expected to be in the game. If you can live without dodge in this remake, I'm sure the gameplay improvements I discussed earlier will still be a fun experience. But enough of the gameplay. Let's right now focus on what I really believe is easily one of the most amazing improvements for The Last of Us Part 1, which in my opinion are the visuals, the improved camera works, and especially the facial animations. All I'll say without spoiling the game for those who have not played The Last of Us Part 1 is that the visuals and the facial animation improvements found in this remake are without a doubt the best I have ever seen in a video game and it showcases why Naughty Dog are regarded as one of the most talented studios in the world. It's so good to the point where I have played the original The Last of Us like over 20 times and this remake still made me get extremely emotional and even cry in certain scenes because of how realistic these characters look and perform at times. And there is one particular scene that I want to show you guys so you can see exactly what I am talking about. So if you don't want to get spoiled story-wise, please skip until the time you see on this video. So I'm going to get into some spoilers in 3, 2, 1. The scene where Sarah dies in the beginning of the game is easily one of the most brutal and intense scenes in gaming history. Even in the remastered version, it's a brutal experience and it made millions of people cry worldwide, even though to today's standards, the visuals look a little bit dated. But with the remake, Naughty Dog elevates this scene to a whole new level that I honestly did not expect. Of course, the visuals are fantastic in the remake, but what truly makes this improved scene a masterpiece in my opinion, is the camera work and the facial animations. The way the camera focuses and gets a little bit closer to Tommy compared to what we see in the remastered, showing on his face the disbelief, the sadness, and just how broken he is when he is watching his own niece crying while she's dying on the arms of her father Joel. The way Sarah is crying back at her father scared for her life and her face of desperation completely shattering me in the process, and Joel fighting for his daughter's life only to see her die on his arms while his face showcases a man losing everything he's got. The facial animations and the little tweaks in the camera work make this scene completely eradicate the remastered version and made me cry so much even though I've played this game so many times. And if you're not convinced by the things that I'm seeing right now, let me show you this comparison of Sarah's death scene from the remastered version to the remake version. Listen to me, I know this hurts me. You're gonna be okay, baby, stay with me. Right. I'm gonna pick you up. I know, baby, I know it hurts. Come on, baby, please. I know, baby, I know. Sarah. Baby. 
Don't do this to me, babe. Don't do this to me, babe. Come on. Come on. Okay, baby, stay with me. I'm gonna pick you up. I know, baby, I know it hurts. Come on, baby, please. I know, baby, I know. Sarah. Baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Come on. You see now why I'm saying this? It's on a whole new level. And for those people who have never played this game before and are lovers of quality cinema and amazing storytelling, this remake will for sure blow you away because every emotional scene in this game is as good as the scene that you just watched. And if you were a fan of The Last of Us Part 1, you're absolutely going to love every single scene in this game. When it comes to the improvements Naughty Dog has made to the visuals, the facial animations, the character models, the environments on top of the masterpiece that was this story of Ellie and Joel in The Last of Us Part 1, and even by including their award-winning accessibility features for disabled people so they can experience this masterpiece, is all nothing short of a technical marvel, a masterful craft, and a true masterpiece. Of course, the gameplay could have been better by adding the dodge mechanic, which is extremely disappointing and a missed opportunity, but the other improvements done to make the gameplay more fluid and responsive and everything surrounding the gameplay like the improved AI and realistic gore makes this a very immersive experience. And at the end of the day, it's up to you if you want to actually play this game for $70 or instead wait for a sale or just never really buy it. All I can really say in this review is that if you're interested in purchasing this remake or if you're a fan of the Last of Us franchise or you're just desperate to play this game so badly or if you are just possibly one of those new people to the franchise or interested in trying the franchise and wondering what version to actually play, The Last of Us Remake version is without a doubt the best version of the best story-based game of all time, in my opinion. It honestly makes me so jealous that there's a lot of people that will be getting to play The Last of Us Part 1 for the first time and that it's going to be the remake version. Because I honestly would give anything to erase my memories of part one just to experience the last of us part one remake for the first time now i won't get into the story as i already made in-depth videos talking about the last of us part one in videos like how the last of us one and two changed my life and why the last of us is still a masterpiece so if you want to know what the story of part one really means to me i welcome you guys to watch those two videos after watching this one. Thank you again PlayStation for providing an early review code for The Last of Us Part 1 and I want to give a special thanks to every single one of you guys who have supported me since the day I started this channel two years ago. It's honestly insane how much we have grown and it's because of all of the support you guys have given me that I got the chance to play this game early. Hopefully more of this is to come in the near future. Remember to like the video and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more content like this and if you want and can support me further so I could potentially accomplish my goals of becoming a full-time content creator, you can support the channel by becoming members of the channel for only $1.99 a month with the link in the description down below. Endure and survive my friends and I'll see you guys next time.